I am Vern Elliott Glassman, author of The Other Chicago Mob. Sitting beside me is Gary Cohen, the man who served the Chicago Police Department from 1966 to 1988 and who is the subject of this book. To set the scene early uh, on in Gary's career, he was asked to join an elite group of undercover cops tasked with taking back the subway system from the thugs and gangs who are brutalizing riders and with violence and intimidation. The unit was called the decoy unit. They met force with overwhelming force. Their exploits became legend. The chapter Gary will read is called Call of the Dark Side and tells of the rise and fall of one of the team members who went from decorated cop to infamous criminal and killer. Gary. Jim was a man before his time and believed in equal opportunity. He would beat the crap out of anyone for any reason, but he was also willing to take as well as give. He was our designated victim in mass transit stings and would be beaten and savaged. This went on for about three years and I was always there to back him up when things went sour. What is important is that you watch each other's six and even my wife appreciated his focus on my safety. When push comes to shove, being a person you can depend on is much more important to a fellow cop than character, and he was always that go-to guy. At the time of one of our shootings, with one offender already shot dead, it was James who with bloodlust said to our sergeant and to those present that he was going to kill the other gang members still seated in the back seat of the car. It was just fortunate that I was able to reason with him and talk him out of this course of action. He would have shot and killed all the others, and no one would have interfered. That's just how it was. Jim felt that he was omnipotent and above reproach. And anything he did would only go to enhance his growing reputation. But in fact, he was more of a loose cannon that could hurt or kill innocent, as well as those deserving. He was a sociopath, but he was a Chicago sociopath. So that sort of made it all right. After our mass transit decoy unit was broken up, we went our different ways. Jim stated in a newspaper article of the day that he felt dissolution upon going back into uniform and felt both unappreciative and used and subsequently quit the department. He opened the hot dog stand, which failed, and then he became a glazer. We saw each other on occasion, but he always had some scheme for enrichment, but nothing concrete. Then I read in the papers of his involvement in front page crime that was all the more shocking to the city due to this larger-than-life press while on the force to that of a cold-blooded mass murderer. On reflection, it was no surprise to those who knew him, but it was still a far fall from grace of Olympian proportions. Along the line, he lost track of good and evil and started to work across the grain. He teamed with the farmers, a vicious family of thugs and killers, in extortion, break-ins, narcotics, strong arm and murder. In fact, what he did was try and make his fortune doing something he was really good at. It was not the Chicago Police Department that brought him down. It was the feds. He was indicted for around 17 counts of criminal activity, but then he simply vanished. Poof. He was gone without a trace. Since it is physically impossible to fall off the planet, the only thing that comes to mind is witness protection. But that's purely speculation. He may, be, he may have been murdered since he crossed swords with organized crime by targeting some of their business when he was freelancing or any number of other questionable characters he brutalized in his long career. And probably we will never know. If he was killed, it never made the news. He was famous in London and print and TV when he worked mass transit as the man with the golden watch and was great press, but he will always be known and remembered for being infamous as one of Chicago's most violent and prolific killers who played both sides of the track. He holds the unique distinction of being one of the most notorious members of Chicago's other mob, the Chicago Police Department. Jim, if you happen to read this, know you are one of a kind among those that I have known and appreciate your saving my ass on many occasions. As to what you did after we parted company, let others pass judgment. I hope you have finally found some peace from the demons that always seem to haunt you.